Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and this is the continuation of the Java Streams series that I am doing. We have already looked into what does a stream pipeline look like and we have also seen what a source is and how to create a source programmatically and in the previous video we have seen few of the terminal operations. In this video we are going to look into the reduce terminal operation. The reduce method comes in three flavors. The first one takes two arguments. It takes an initial value and it takes an accumulator. The second version just takes the accumulator. We don't have to give any initial value. The third version of the reduce takes the initial value. It has an accumulator. In addition, it does have a combiner as well. We will look into all these three in this video. And just like other terminal operations, we are going to answer these three questions. Let's jump into the IntelliJ and look at the examples. Before we start looking at the reduce method, I'm going to implement the reduction concept using a non-functional way. See, reduction is just a concept. Reduction means that we are going through all the elements in a data structure and reducing it to one element. So reduction concept itself doesn't have to do anything with the functional programming. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to apply the reduction concept in a non-functional programming way. And once we do that, and then I'm going to write another example to apply the reduction using the functional programming way. And in that way, we will use the reduce method, but not for this example. For our example, we are going to have a list of integers and we are going to calculate the sum of all the integers in the list. And I'm going to declare a variable called sum of the integer type. Now I'm going to loop through all the integers one by one in a for loop. And I'll keep adding the value and storing it into the sum variable. And once it's finished, I'm going to print the value of the sum. So I'm going to save and run the program. It's a pretty simple program. Just keep this code in mind when we look at the reduce example after this. There are two main things to note here. One is that we started with an initial value, which is zero in our case. And secondly, to calculate the sum, we keep on adding the value of the elements into the previously calculated sum. And once the loop goes through all the elements of the list, we will get our desired result. I have now created a new class called reduce example. And in the main method, I'm going to create a stream of integers from one to nine. I'm going to write the reduce function and I'm going to use the first flavor of the reduce. Let me write the code and then I'll explain in detail. So this flavor of the reduce takes two arguments. The very first argument is the initial value, which is zero in our case. And the second argument of the reduce is a binary operator. I have already done a video on the various types of lambdas and which has covered the binary operators as well. So if you're not aware of the binary operation, I would strongly suggest to go over that series as well. Now the way internally this will work is that when this line of code is executed and since we have reduce, which is the terminal operation, the integer stream will start producing the stream. As soon as it produces the very first element, in our case, the very first element is one. When one is produced, the accumulator is called, which is the binary operator we have given here. And when that lambda is executed, the value of A is the initial value that we have given, which is zero in our case. The value of B will be the first element that is produced by the stream, which is one in our case. So zero and one is passed into the body of the lambda they both are added, so zero plus one becomes one. And since it's a lambda expression, one is returned back. Now, when the second element comes, which is two in our case, so now A's value will be one, B's value will be two. And in the body, we will do one plus two, now it becomes three. When the third element is produced by the stream, now A's value will become three, this three is the one which we just calculated in the previous step. And B's value will be the third element of the stream, which is three again. In the body, now we add three plus three, six. So every time a new element is created in the stream, the accumulator is called and the value of A 
is what was calculated in the previous step and the value of b is the element of the stream once the stream produces all the elements in this case until 9 for us the sum that is calculated in the body of the lambda is returned and stored back into the sum variable so next i'm going to print the value of the sum and when i save and run the program the value of sum is printed which is 45 now if you compare this code with the code that we have written previously you will notice that the logic that we have written in one line in this case was written in four lines in the non-functional way and both of them actually does the exact same thing just a quick note here that i have written this logic using the lambda because using lambda makes it easier to understand the concept but as you would know that we can always replace this lambda with the method reference way which is more concise if you don't know what method reference are i would strongly suggest that later on watch the videos that i have created on method reference because that is a very important concept that you will need to understand and now i'm going to save and run the program just to confirm that my program works now let's have a look at the second flavor of reduce i will be using the same integer stream so i'm going to comment the first consumption of integer stream and make a copy and in this version since the second flavor only takes accumulator i'm going to remove the initial value this flavor of reduce returns an optional of the type so to get the actual value i'll call a get method on that if you don't know how optional work i have created the video please have a look on what optionals are the reason why this version of reduce returns an optional will become clear very soon first let's have a look at how this reduce will work since we have not given the initial value as one of the arguments in this reduce the very first element that is created by the stream is considered as the initial value rest of the functioning is very similar to the previous flavor of the reduce now let's get to the reason why this version returns a optional value so in the previous version what would happen if the stream is empty in that case the reduce will return the initial value because it doesn't have any element so it doesn't have to do any accumulation so it just returns the initial value so in that version of the reduce we will always be 100 percent certain that we will get some value back if the stream is empty we get the initial value back in our case which will be zero now in the second flavor if the stream is empty in that case since we have not provided any initial value there isn't anything to return that is the reason in that scenario when stream is empty we will return an empty optional and that is why the optional has been introduced in java it is used in the use cases where a method doesn't have any value to be returned back if you watched my video on optional you will know that we shouldn't be getting a value of an optional if we have to use the get method we should always wrap that statement in a if condition where we would check whether a value is present in an optional or not the even better way is to actually call the if present method and give it a consumer which we could use to print the value so i'm going to modify this program to use the optional correctly and since we are not storing the value into the sum variable i'm going to comment that line i will now run the program and as you see we are printing the value 45 which is the sum of all the integer numbers in our stream now let's move on to the third version of the reduce to see an example of this third flavor let's change our requirement a bit so previously our requirement was that we had to add all the numbers whatever is present in the list and print that out now our new requirement is that we don't want to do a summation of the number we want to do a concatenation of the numbers so the output of the reduce we want is a string value and that string value should be created by concatenating all the elements in the string so the main difference between this flavor of the reduce and the previous two flavors of the reduce is that in this third flavor we will have to do a some kind of conversion 
So we have stream of integers, but we want to concatenate these integers and create a string. So there is some kind of conversion that needs to happen before we get the end result. And these type of use cases are exactly where the third flavor of the reduce will be used. So now I'm going to write the reduce method and then let's dig into how exactly it works. The very first argument is the initial value and the second argument is the accumulator and the third argument is a combiner. And now let's dig into what does accumulator do and what does combiner do. So to understand how this flavor of reduce will work, let's first simply forget the third argument. And I'll, I'll tell you why we are doing that. Let's only concentrate on the first argument and the second argument, which is the accumulator. So when you do not consider the third argument, the actual functioning behind the scene is exactly same as the very first flavor, which means when the very first element of the stream is produced, at that time, the value of A is assigned the initial value that we have given. The value of B is the very first element of the stream, which is one in our case. So we go into the body of the lambda, we do an empty string, a plus, and then one. And you should know that the plus operator is a overloaded operator. And when it sees that one side of the operator is a string, then it actually does a concatenation. It doesn't do a sum. So empty string is concatenated with one. And now the output is as one in a string type. And now when the second element is created, which is two in our case, the value of A is the string of one and value of B is the integer two. So they both are passed into the body and now one, which is string is concatenated with two and the output is one, two in a string format. And when the third element is created, the value of A is one, two, value of B is three, one, two, plus three becomes one, two, three, and so on. So this way, all the elements of the stream are considered and they keep getting on concatenated. And finally, when the stream ends, the concatenated result will be returned back, which I will store into a string variable. And I'm going to save and run the program and we get a desired output. Now you might be thinking that if we got the desired result, just by using the first argument and the second argument of the reduce, why do we even need the third argument? And the answer to that is the third argument, the combiner only comes in play for the parallel streams. The stream that we have here is not parallel and hence the third argument doesn't even come in play in our case. I'm not going to go in a whole lot of details of the parallel stream, but I will explain you how exactly will it work in the case of the parallel streams. The way to create a parallel stream is just to call the parallel method on the stream. The main benefit of a parallel stream is concurrency, which means multiple threads will be doing the tasks at the same time. When we run the program, just for our example, let's say there are two different threads that gets created, only two threads for our example. The first thread takes care of concatenating the first four numbers, which is one, two, three, and four. The second thread will get the functioning of combining the remaining of the numbers. So which means the second thread will concatenate five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So these two threads will run in parallel and both of them will produce two different strings. Thread one will produce one, two, three, four, Thread two will produce five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now we have two strings and we want to concatenate the result produced by first thread to the result produced by the second thread. So that concatenation is actually done by the combiner method. The example I gave you is of the two string, but the same concept will be applied even if we have, let's say nine threads in this case. So the main takeaway is that the combiner will come only play for a parallel streams. Otherwise combiner has no role to play. So these are the only three reduce flavors that you need to be aware of. If you've seen my previous video, 
you might have seen that we also see how does a terminal operation behave in the case of infinite stream so just for completeness i'm going to call the reduce on an infinite stream and for that i have created a new class called reducing infinite stream and i'm going to write the code in here so i'm going to create an infinite stream and the generator that i will give will just return 10. so i have created a infinite stream which will keep on producing 10 for infinite number of times and now i'm going to call the reduce method on that infinite stream i'm using the second flavor here but doesn't matter which one you use and now i'm going to print the sum i will save and run the program and as you notice here the program isn't ending so the reduce method is keep on adding the 10 into the previous sum calculated for infinite number of times so in short the reduce method will not terminate an infinite stream i'm going to stop the program since it's not going to stop by itself before i jump back into the slides to answer the questions that we need to for the reduce method i just wanted to highlight that i have created this class called reduce with print example and i have actually put the print statements within the lambda function so that you know what's going on internally so i will check in this code and provide the link in the description of the video so i would highly recommend that you uncomment the code and try to run this program and see how reduce work in the various situations and i have written the comments so which are pretty self-explanatory if you do have any question leave it in the comment i will get back to you now coming back to the slide so the return value of reduce it varies it really depends what your requirement is it could be integer let's say if we are doing a sum of integers if we are taking an average of those integers it could be double in our case we have also seen an example where we wanted a string return so the return will depend on the requirement is it a reduction yes it is a reduction since we are going through all the elements from first to the last element and trying to reduce them into one value what happens for the infinite stream the reduce method do not terminate the infinite stream as we saw in the example that is all i wanted to discuss for reduce if you like the video hit the like button in the next video we are going to discuss our last terminal operation which is collect until next time bye bye